Hi guys, welcome back to Gardening with Creations by DX & Co. Today we're going to get started with some electrical. As you can see, we've got the wall built, we've got everything all set, almost everything cleared out of this area already, and it's time to get the electrical outlets where we want it. So we're going to do a couple different videos, one today, possibly installing the actual electrical outlets themselves, but we are actually going to rewire a light switch as well in a separate video and create a separate lighting area on and off switch for this area as opposed to the rest of the garage. So let's get started. So let's start by actually talking about the boxes. So these boxes are pretty inexpensive. Uh, when you're doing a rough wall like this, there's nothing there. You typically would go with something like this. This is just a, a single unit, okay? So this is just made for one. You can get them in doubles, triples, so on and so forth, depending on what your needs are. But obviously mine's just a single. Um, and so these ones, as you can see, they just have some nails. So you hammer these in to the joists and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Um, but the uh, if you already have a pre-existing drywall, they make a completely different box where you can actually cut the hole, put it in, and then as you screw it in, it tightens up and kind of latches into that. So make sure you're using the right one for your project. But for our project today, we're using this one here. This thing's cost about a dollar to five dollars a piece really depends on where you get them and you know so on and so forth so very inexpensive um, these have little bust outs here and those bust outs are for you to run your cords in so typically we run in uh, from the top out from the bottom or so on and so forth so i usually like to break out at least one and i usually go the opposite side just that's just personal we'll talk more on that in a minute here uh, but it's probably before installing it, it's actually easy to knock those tabs out. So let's go ahead and do that first and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so quick, very simple. Just punched it out with a little screwdriver. It's just held on by these tiny little tabs. It's not hard to get those out at all, but you can see how I did this one here and then the opposite up top. It's just so that the wires don't kind of interfere with each other. The Romex or electrical wire is what it's called. Romex is going to go right through there. Okay, so that's that part. Now, the next thing to know is when you're mounting these to the wall like this, you don't want it to go flush with your joist, meaning you don't want it even with your joist because what will happen is then when you go and lay your drywall, this is going to be recessed too far back. So that's always been kind of one of those things that, you know, everybody's afraid to do this part because they're like, oh, what if I screw it up? You know, how am I going to fix it? Because once the drywall is up, you know, you really can't pull this all down and then try to readjust it. And then you're going to the hardware store trying to get longer screws to hold in your plug and so on and so forth. Well, believe it or not, these things are, I wouldn't say dummy proof, but they are helpful. There is here a little notch. See this little notch right here? That is actually a mark for you, okay? That mark is so that way you set it against your stud before hammering it in. Now let me bring you in closer so you can see exactly where I'm talking here. So these notches that we talked about, we're just gonna butt them right up against our stud there like that. So now we've got, as you can see, we're no longer flush mounted with the stud. So it's giving us that extra room that we needed to make sure that we can butt our drywall up around this, right? So when we cut our drywall, we'll have the right depth automatically. So that's a really cool feature. Notice on this side, however, it doesn't have that. And that's on purpose because our nails go that way. So. But what if I want to mount it over here, Adam? Okay, that's fine. Just flip it around. It's universal, okay? Just flip it over. Now, this is the same box that you can use for an electrical outlet. You can use it for a light switch 
all the same. So this, you buy this box for four or five bucks and then you buy the actual outlet for about 87 cents. Things electricians really don't want you to know. The most expensive part of this project is the wire. I got a hundred feet of Romex. It was about $88. It's very expensive. Uh, but we do need a hundred feet because we're pulling in all different directions. And I'm going to show you that next. All right. So now that you guys know a little bit more about the box and the, and the unit itself and how you would install it, we have to figure out where we're going to install this here. So as you can see, I've got this here. I think the light switch is gonna go over here, right? So we're gonna put a light switch box in there so we know, okay, one there, um, measure a comfortable height, right? But then I also, as I mentioned, want to have plugs on the inside, but I don't want them down here on the ground for me because they're animals and they might chew on stuff. So I'm gonna be putting the actual electrical outlets higher up for that. And then I also, because I'm using tools on the other side of this wall, I'm gonna use the same wire to jump off of and I'm gonna wire my outlets on the other side of the wall. I'm gonna go ahead and basically lay out where I want them and you would do the same. And then you can put the boxes in before doing anything else. It's a good idea to actually take a pencil and mark where you want them. And that way you know, okay, let me just go through really quick and pop these all in. So I'm gonna do that step off camera really quick for you and then we'll come back and we'll show you once everything's in place. And uh, we'll start talking about how to run our wire and what gauge wire you need, depending on your project. Okay, so as you can see, got our light switch installed. That one's backwards because it's the other side of the wall. We've got another one here and another one there and then a backwards one. And then I also have one up a little higher. I know it's kind of weird, but it's because it's a tool bench on the other side and I plan on having a shelf there for charging stuff. So again, it's placing stuff where you want it to be. Now the reason I went with this height, this is about four foot. I measured one of the light switches. That's about where the light switches are in the garage. So just comfortable height. And then as we go around the room, you can start to see that the original owner already had some plugs at that height. So I just continued that to make it kind of uniform. It's high enough that the animals won't be able to chew on it at all. We can put some night lights in the plugs and so on and so forth. The next step actually is to run our wire. So running our wire means that we have to get the wire through the actual joists. And so what we need to do is actually drill holes in order to run that wire. So when we drill a hole through here, we do not want to drill up close, we don't want it to be back here. We want to try to get as center as possible when we're drilling our holes because what that means is that if we drive a screw in here on either side, we don't want to take a chance of that screw hitting our electrical cord that's running through the wall. So it's best to use a spade bit. Let me show you what a spade bit is. So this is what they call a spade bit, okay? It is basically just got a point there and then blades right here. So as you're cutting through, it's gonna make that size hole in the wall. A spade bit is ideal for something like this. This one in particular is an inch and three eighths. That's pretty large. Remember, we don't want to have a giant hole in our studs and compromise the integrity, plus take a chance of hitting it. We want to have a hole that's just big enough for one or two wires, depending on how many you're running. So that one's a bit big, I'd have to get another, a smaller one, but I wanted to show you an example of a spade bit. Those are ideal, but if you don't have access to a spade bit, a regular drill bit, so a nice fat one such as this would do. Uh, this one's probably a little small actually, but I could kind of swirl around in there and widen up the holes if I needed to. So that's what we need to do next, is identify exactly how many holes we need to drill. Now, we need to go up over our door frame because we're going to be pulling our electrical 
from over there. So either we go up through our door frame and our, our excuse me, our cripple studs there, um, or we come up through what they call the top plate. So in other words, we'd run the electrical up there, drill through both of those plates and come down for our power supply. Now we do need to supply power to our light switch. We need to supply power to each of our cords. So uh, we're gonna run, we have to drill a hole through at least this stud. We'll have to drill through this stud, this stud, this stud, and then all the way through to our last two studs, just stopping on this one here. Now, if we decide to go that route, or we could drill through our top plate, come down and drop here, and then run all the way back up and go over, drill down, go all the way back up, go over, drill down. But we're gonna use a lot more wire that way. So we'll just drill through each of our studs and we also need to supply power to this one here. So might be better to go through our top plates, but in that case I have to drill through two versus the cripple studs. So we just have to figure out how we wanna run our wire. All right, so a good trick here is to actually take the wire that you're running, and we will talk about this wire and why we chose this one in a second, but good trick is to take the wire that you're running, and if you're only running a single bit of wire, then just measure how thick that wire is against your drill bit. So, for example here, I've got uh, just a regular drill bit, and then I've got my wire, and I'm just measuring, is it wider than my wire? Am I gonna have a tough time pulling it through or not? So if it is, then go to the next one up. If you're worried about, you know, putting too large of a hole in or something like that, that's a good way to do it. Just go a little bit wider than your wire itself to, in order to cover that and make sure it slides through that hole. That way you're not making too thick of a hole in your actual stud, but you're making one big enough to comfortably run your wire through. As I said, you can kind of rotate around with the drill, open it up a little bit if the largest size drill bit you have is just about the size of this one. So um, this is standard 14 by two wire, okay? And I'll explain what that means here in just a second. And uh, the actual drill bit that I'm gonna end up going with is 16 30 seconds, in case you were wondering. So 16 30 seconds should be large enough to go through there. Uh, if not, I can always step up to a, a 31 64th or even a half inch. Half inch is probably the better way to go, but we're gonna start with a 16 30 second and see how it goes. All right, so let me get drilling. As I mentioned, we are we have chosen to go with 14 slash 2. Okay. So what you're looking for, now it's a hundred foot roll. What you're looking for when you're choosing your wire is the 14 actually stands for the gauge or the thickness of the wire. A lot of your standard household wire is gonna be a 14 gauge wire. Now when you go with a lower number, 12, 10, so on and so forth, that's thicker. Actually, the higher the number, the thinner that is. And the two actually, believe it or not, just stands for how many wires are in there. So the two typically would be a white and a black wire, which is your standard for most houses. They're wired with a white and a black wire. You're hot and you're neutral, okay? Now, you always also want to make sure that the one that you choose has a ground wire in it. So you can see here that this one says with ground, okay? That ground wire is very important. You wanna make sure that all your plugs are grounded, so on and so forth, okay? So 14-2, two wires, 14 gauge with a ground. That's what we're working with today. All right, 
So we're going to start running our wire and I'm actually going to start at the end of my run and snake my wire all the way through to the start of my run. What I mean by my run is where the electrical is going to end up. So I'm going to start with the very last box, in other words. Okay, so what we want to start with is making sure we've got our wire that stretches from this interior box to this box here and then runs out. A nice pair of wire cutters have a little blade in them that you can snip your wire with or I also like to use a pair of actual snips uh, that do the job just as well. But you should pick up a pair of wire cutters. If you don't, they look something like this. You can see each one of them has a different gauge on it here. And this is for stripping the wire, which is very important in the next couple of steps here. So what we want to do is take our wire and measure out essentially how much wire we actually need. So we take our spool of wire. We're going to be running this through the top here, okay, and to our electrical outlet. I want to leave some slack, just about a maybe a good inch out of once it exposes outside of the box. Give yourself a little bit more slack rather than trying to cut it exact because if you end up cutting it to an exact number or exact measurement, then you're gonna end up fighting short. It's gonna be really hard to work with. So even though wire is very expensive, don't be afraid to give yourself some slack. So then I'm gonna be coming in from the top here, wire to my outlet, and that's it. Then I'm gonna wire another piece down from my outlet and run through. So I basically need to take this and measure, okay, if I'm coming down in my outlet, give myself an extra inch. All right, there we go, that should be enough. Now I just take my snips here and be afraid to work with it, unless it's a live wire, of course, but if you are working on a live outlet or a live feed, right now we're not on purpose, make sure you just kill the power. Kill the power at the actual fuse box and or circuit breaker. Plug something in to that area. Make sure that it is 100% off. It'll be shutting off just that one breaker and not the whole house. Uh, but if you feel uncomfortable, you can just kill the entire main. For now, we're working on a new wall frame. So all of this electrical that we're running is not something that I have to worry about until live wire that comes in and that's when we have to kill that. So that should only be on one plug because everything else is going to jump off of that. Wire. I've got enough wire to wire a plug into this box, a plug into this box, but I need to remember I also need a plug, a wire to come out of that plug, go through this wall and go to the next one. Okay. And then um, I can actually take and without going through my wall, just along my wall, the length that I need. So now I can give myself the length that I need properly and I can measure and cut it. So what I want to do, stretch this a little taut because it is going through that wall um, and you don't want it very loose in the wall. You want it taut but not too tight. And you're going to go over to your next plug and do the same thing, measure, and then you're going to cut that length of wire, same way we cut it before. I'm just gonna take that hole that I drilled here, I'm just gonna fish that wire straight through that hole. I'm gonna do it on each run. So remember, I drilled a hole for each one of these. If you're gonna do something like that, we're gonna tie two pieces of wire together, like I may have to do that in the ceiling. Um, you need to put a junction box, preferably a metal junction box that has a cover plate on it. This is a junction box on the wall there. And that's what I mean. So in this case, that box on the wall, I can actually put two pieces of wire together with wire nuts secured with a faceplate like that. 
and that would be proper. But if you're, you cannot just leave two wires in the wall exposed. It's very dangerous. Don't ever do that. Metal junction box mounted securely, not hanging loose, uh, where those two wires are going to meet, even if that's up in a ceiling, in a wall, whatever the case may be.